Hi guys. So, Yoga 101. So, on my free Instagram channel, I have some Hatha Chi, and I have some warm-ups, and I have one with kids. Um, what I'm going to do in this one is we're going to do warm-ups, and we're going to dissect the sun salutation for you so that you can find one that hopefully resonates with you. If you don't find one that resonates with you from this video, um, then please feel free to message me. Let me know and um, let me know your specific limitations and I can find one for you. Purpose of sun salutations is to warm the body so then we can get into the holding postures. So we can gently hold and stretch the body. So this is my intention for you is to find this nice moving meditation. Um, once you find what your sun salutation is, um, it's amazing the benefits that it can provide for you. So first we're going to warm up. Okay. I have these a bunch of different ways. Um, I have one with Lexi that I just put up. I have them a bunch of ways, but we're going to start as a class right now. So I want you to find an easy seated position. If you need, you can get something to sit on. If you have a yoga block, you can sit on the yoga block. If sitting cross-legged doesn't work for you, sit on the edge of your couch, okay? You don't need to be seated in a cross-legged position. Um, you can also have your legs out in front of you. So find what works for you, okay? Feel your sit bones grounded, your shoulders are wide, your jaws relaxed. Allow yourself to sink your sit bones into the surface that you're on and allow yourself to inhale deeply through the nose and exhale. Good, so start to go through the body. Relax your ankles, relax your knees, relax your hips, your thighs, soften the belly. Feel the breath move through the lung space as you inhale and open up deeply and exhale and release completely. Allow your shoulders to relax, your elbows, your wrists all the way through to your fingertips. Your neck and throat relax, your jaw releases, allowing your lips to part and your tongue to release away from the roof of the mouth. Inhaling and exhaling. Every time you inhale, Imagine as though you're sipping the breath in through the straw, using your nostrils. And as you exhale, imagine as though you're fogging a mirror being held underneath the nostrils. So inhaling and exhaling, relaxing your face and releasing your jaw. Nice deep breaths. And as you continue to focus on the breath, Allow yourself to hear the soft sound. It sounds like a wave in the ocean, or it can sound like you're trying to whisper your breath, inhaling and exhaling. Allow yourself to melt, relax your flexors, feel yourself settle back. You should be able to find a seated position that doesn't irritate your spine. If your spine's irritated, it's not in its natural state. Softly take your arms down beside you. We're gonna inhale, stretch all the way up to the sky. And exhale, press down. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, press down. Good, inhale, reach all the way up. Good, let's go ahead and take the right side over. So I'm mirroring you if you're watching me. Nice deep breaths. Good. Pull the underside of the body up. Make sure your sit bones are grounded. Your flexors are relaxed. Your thighs are released. Your jaws relaxed. Let the neck release. Soften the belly. Nice big breaths. Inhaling and exhaling. Relaxing your face. Releasing your jaw. Take a nice big inhale. Exhale. Take the top arm all the way around. Pull the shoulder away from the ear and allow the head to hang. Inhaling and exhaling here. Good, and you can tip the nose down, tuck the chin in, you can look up and away, move the head around and see where it feels best for you. Stay for an inhale. 
and let's exhale slowly stack the spine back up nice and tall inhale reach up exhale press down inhale reach all the way up good let's go to the other side take the hand down extend over to the side draw the underside of the body up shoulders wide jaws relax again sit bones are grounded and feel the underside of the body pulling up so important to do these correctly because you're massaging your insides we're not just stretching you're also massaging all of your organs nice deep breaths you're going to be able to side bend one way better than the other the side that you have issues with is the side that you should spend more time on taking an inhale and exhale top arm comes all the way around shoulder comes away from the ear let the head hang nice deep breaths Hear the sound of your breath. Take an inhale and exhale, slowly come back up. Good, inhale, reach up. Exhale, press down. Good, inhale, reach all the way up. We're gonna go ahead and rotate over to the right side. Hands on the knee, the other hand tense behind the hip, shoulders back and down. Now feel your sit bones grounding. Don't yank yourself over yet. Feel your sit bones grounding. Good, soften the belly in. Make sure you're not overextending your low back. Okay, and lift up super tall through the crown of the head. Take a big inhale, and as you exhale, let the elbows draw outward. Feel your breath, fill the space from your shoulder blades to your collarbones. Don't squeeze the shoulders into the body in any way. Feel yourself softening the elbows, lengthening the spine. It's only by creating space in your spine that you're gonna get more movement out of it. So soften the belly and make sure your deepest abdominal muscles are softly activated to help support it. It's not socking the belly in, it's lifting. Nice deep breaths. Nice big inhale. And exhale, come all the way around. Good, don't hinge forward, because that's not gonna help your spine. Instead, round forward and gently rock from side to side. Let all those muscles softly release back. Good, and you're gonna slowly come back up. Circle, reach the arms all the way up. And we're gonna rotate over to the other side. Hands on the knee, the other hands tented behind the hip. Good, so again, just like when you side bend, you rotate better one way than the other as well. So get the shoulders back and down. Good, get the pelvis to move a little bit. So I'm just rocking on my sit bones. Good, sitting nice and tall, shoulders wide, nice big inhale. And exhale, draw yourself around, shoulders wide. And breathe into the space between the collarbones and the shoulder blades. Nice big breaths, inhaling deeply. And exhaling completely. Good. So why we warm up like this is we're moving the spine in every direction. Nice big inhale. And exhale, come all the way around. Good, now we've done the spine both ways. Now you can slide forward all the way down. Good. I just noticed I have some yoga journal magazines in the way. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and slowly come back up. Good. So from here, you can stay seated for cat cow if you wish. If your knees are really bad, you might decide to do this. You can also do this if you're sitting on the couch, you can do this. So you can do this sitting. We're just gonna be moving forward and curling back. So I wanna show you from the side what that looks like. So cross-legged, imagine there's a wall and a wall. And you're gonna slowly go forward and then carry it back and curl through and go back. And then you're carrying it forward and going back. So same with if you can't cross your legs, you're coming forward and going back. So you're using your legs for support so that you can get movement in the spine, okay? That's what that looks like. Otherwise, if you can, we're gonna come into tabletop. So come onto your hands and knees. Okay. And from here, yep, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna inhale, roll the shoulders back and down softly. You're gonna guide the chest forward and you're going to look up, no, don't jam your neck. That's not really looking up, but look ahead. Imagine there's a string at the chest and it's drawing you forward and really feel your hips, move them around if you can. So for those of you who are seated, you can softly shift the weight from hip to hip. 
Now you're not jamming your back, you're pulling it forward, so you're feeling a stretch. Curl the tail, press up and away. Good, and then gently rock out here. Good, inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Good, inhale. Good, and exhale. When you curl under, you shouldn't be letting the belly hang out, okay? You should have the belly drawn in. Okay, you should be moving your body with strength. Yeah, a lot of people think just because yoga is stretching, it actually really isn't a ton of stretching. Um, it's, it's getting the body to move, but you need to make sure that you're moving all the muscles properly. So even something as simple as cat-cow oftentimes is done really wrong. Now from cat-cow, we're just going to go to look to one side and center and the other side and center. Good. Just getting the hips to move more. And the other. Good. One more time. One. Good. And the other. Good. And let's come back. Good. We're going to discuss child's pose. Child's pose is a very important part of yoga. Um, it is your resting pose. Downward facing dog will eventually become a resting pose for you. Child's pose is big toes touching and the knees are wide. Now they always say to sit back. We do want you to sit back, okay? Now, depending on your knees, depending on your hips, depending on your stature, you might not be able to do that, and that's okay. So what you do is, if you can, you just bring yourself down, right? And it's wherever you can get your head to rest, because you don't wanna be hanging out like this. This is so unsupported, it's bad for your knees, it's bad for your back. You want support, so get the head down and try to get the back just to flatten out. If that's uncomfortable, raise your bum up higher, okay? So even if you aren't really in a child's pose, the purpose of it is for you to just to breathe. It's getting comfortable so you can breathe, okay? So if you need another variation in child's pose doesn't work for you, let me know, okay? So child's pose, okay? So from here, we're going to work into one of the most difficult poses I think that there is in yoga, and that's downward facing dog in downward facing dog and bear with me because a lot of times people who um have done yoga for a long time um they still don't do great downward facing dogs um and it's very hard to teach so i'm not poo-pooing anybody it is very difficult to instruct so let's go ahead and see what we can do this is why I don't really do a ton of videos um, that involve yoga because it's really is about closing your eyes and feeling. I don't want you to look at me and go, oh wow, I, I, I wanna do that or look in the mirror and say, oh look what I'm doing because it's really about listening and trying to find the muscle engagement. Yoga is not an easy exercise. So what you're going to do, I want you to take the hands down, middle finger facing forward. Okay, your hands are shoulder width apart. They might even be wider. Okay, it depends on how tight your shoulders are and where, because you want to make sure that when you press up, really what you're doing is you're doing this. And if you can't do this while you're sitting, you're not gonna be doing this while you have weight into your hands. It's not gonna happen. So if you can only go to here and you're squeezing up here, well, guess what? Your spine's gonna be taking the hit for it. So you might have to take your hands wider so that you can come up, okay? It all depends on how your shoulders are. So let's take the hands down, spread the fingers out, and you're gonna go ahead and tuck your toes. From here, you're gonna go ahead and you're going to start to lift the knees. So as you lift the knees, the first thing people do is straighten them, don't, okay? So I want you to pull the shoulder blades down the back, draw the belly up and in, and you're gonna lift the knees, okay? Now from here, I want you to straighten the shoulders. Let the head hang, and you're pressing back into the tailbone. Let your shoulder blades sit down your back, okay? Now, if you have somebody home with you, you might wanna get them to make sure that you're not overextending your low back or rounding forward. So if you're looking down and you can see your hands, you're probably not pushing back enough. You wanna look to your toes. Maybe you need to take one of these mornings with all the time that we have these days and give yourself a pedicure so press back okay and what i want you to do is take one leg straight but don't let the heel come down i want your knee to go straight i want you to be able to lift your kneecap up and engage the knee muscle 
Okay, and I don't want you to round your back out while you're doing it. Okay, so then go back to the sitting back position. Sit back into the legs again. Good, take the left leg straight. So you can get the knee straight and not round and come forward into the hands anymore. Keep pushing back so that you're truly stretching behind the knee and down into the leg. You may feel this behind the knee and down into your foot. If you feel that, that means that you're this close, if you don't already, to having plantar fasciitis. It's a great stretch for you, but don't focus on dropping your heels. Get your knees to be straighter. Try to go side to side a few times. Your sides will be different. We use our legs differently, okay? So feel how different they are. If you're a little bit more flexible, and you can reassure me that you definitely have the legs straight, okay? The other leg is bent. You can start to release the heel. And when you release the heel, the whole body moves back and down with it. So you're not releasing the heel and dropping the tail. You're releasing and pressing back. Good. Lift back up. Try the other side. Press back. Take breaks in child's pose as you need to. Okay. This is not easy. It's an inversion technically. Good. And come back up. You can even do this if you're having issues. You can do this with your hands against the wall and your legs flat. And you can work at straightening the leg and bending one and then straightening the other one if you have blood pressure issues, if you notice that you're getting a little bit warm in the face, okay? So we're just walk in your downward facing dog and then go ahead, Anastasia. Make it quick. Go, go. Yeah. So go ahead and sit back in child's pose, whatever it is. Okay, so downward facing dog. Now we're gonna try it with both legs, okay? I'm not saying it's easy. Place the hands down, tuck the toes, lift the knees, sit back, shoulders wide, okay? Drawing in the belly. You're gonna go ahead and see if you can take both legs straight. Don't round the back, okay? Some of you may be over flexible in your spine, and this is, again, another reason why one-on-ones are really important. If you need to, you can also message me and we can book an appointment and I can see you through Zoom until we're able to see each other face to face again. So you're gonna slowly see if you can release the heels down, but those legs have to be straight. They have to, okay? Or else what's happening is you're overstretching your Achilles tendon. So you need to make sure that you're getting the knees straight. Her knees are bent so much. We sit and we sit and we sit. So we need to make sure that we're really working on that. It sucks, it's gonna be tight, it's gonna pull, but it's effective. It's what we need to pull out of the pose, okay? So, sound good? Work with me guys, okay? So downward facing dog. Essential, it's a part of every sun citation unless you absolutely need to drop it, okay? So let's go ahead and make our way into our downward facing dog. We're gonna walk the feet forward and we're going to come hanging in a rag doll. We're going to start working on our sun salutations. Sound good? So tuck the toes, lift the knees, press back, shoulders wide, nice big breaths. <sighs> Breathing definitely helps when you're in downward facing dog. Look to the hands and you're going to just take some baby steps all the way forward. Good. And just stay here wherever you can with the legs straight just for a moment, then you're gonna let them soften. Hands come into elbow creases and you're gonna hang down into ragdoll. And breathe. Good, go ahead, let the hands fall down to the mat. We're gonna curl and roll all the way up. Circle the arms, reach all the way up to the sky and bring the hands down through prayer. Good. Sun salutations are tough, so, um, I'll show you some variations. Um, I think most of you know I've been trained in the Hatha yoga, um, which really just embodies all the yogas, but my specific tradition is the Scaravelli tradition, with Bonda Scaravelli, which is about moving the spine. So not so much big on chaturangas. Um, not very many people can actually do them well um, and do them correctly. Lots of people hurt themselves. I see lots of injuries from them. Um, and bucket loads of misalignments. Um, so the yogas all have their purpose, 
I don't really want to get into it too much, but there are so many different beautiful sun salutations that you can find that you can pull from. I'm going to start with teaching you guys the one that I teach at one of my corporate clients because a lot of them have bad wrists from all the computer work. So they can't really do load bearing. So we avoid plank and we spend very little time in downward facing dog. And instead of a chaturanga, chaturanga lowering, we actually do it pressing up. Okay. So we're going to start with that as our base sun salutation. It's a beautiful, accessible sun salutation. Um, take it as you need to. We're going to start really slow. If you find slow is easy, you're not doing it right because it takes a bucket load of muscles to slow down movement. Um, it takes just big muscles, uh, the fast reactors to go fast. So you can put this on triple speed if you want and get a really good workout. But honestly, going slower is going to help achieve um, more muscle tone and more awareness as well and less injury. So start with the hands in prayer. Just close your eyes. Good. Take a few nice deep breaths. Feel your feet grounded into the mat. So this is called mountain pose. Okay, mountain pose. Tadasana. Um, so feel your feet grounded. Feel your knees soft but lengthened. Feel your tailbone softly tucked and your belly softly drawing in. So you're not just standing and letting everything hang out. Draw in. Good. Roll your shoulders back and down softly. Good. Let the thumbs grace your heart center. So that's where your sternum is, the center of the chest. Let them just touch. Good. And breathe into them. Expand the lung space and exhale. Close your eyes. Feel yourself lengthening through the crown of the head. Inhaling deeply. And exhaling completely. Good. Give yourself complete permission to be here for this. Give your mind permission to be here too. So if you're used to doing sun salutations, take this opportunity to open your spirit and open your mind to still learn and get an effective and efficient practice from slowing it down. Let's take an inhale. And let's go ahead, exhale. You're gonna press the hands down, inhale, circle, reach your arms up to the sky. Good. And the shoulders stay down so you're not squeezing up. You're gonna exhale and we do what's called a swan dive. You swan dive hinging at the hips and you come all the way down. Now, if coming down doesn't work for you, you can keep something in front of you that keeps you from going that low. We're trying to create a hinge in your swan dive. So you're folding at the hips. You're not rounding the back down, okay? So in your flat back, so it feels like you're popping your bum out. So you're taking your tail and pulling it out behind you. Your legs are still long and lifting, so this is gonna be a stretch for the back of the legs. Draw the belly in and recruit the core. Don't let it hang out. Pull it up and in. Okay, lift through pelvic floor. Okay, gentlemen, do your testicular lift. Okay, ladies, do your proper Kegel. Okay, now you can also take the hands onto the bottom of the legs. They're just pressing in gently. You don't push in because you can hurt your knees. So you can come up halfway lift. Okay, good. Now we're going to go ahead and let the fingertips touch the mat gently. You're going to shift your weight into the left foot. You're going to slowly peel the right leg up and reach back and you're going to place it down onto the mat. Okay, so you're going to really make sure your feet are hip width apart. It doesn't matter how long they are apart, but the width matters. You're pressing into the front leg. Okay, you're going to come up, tuck the tail. Good, and slowly reach the arms up. Nice big inhale, stretch up. Good, push the back leg straight. Don't let the knee bend, okay? Because that's a natural state for the right side. As soon as you start to press it straight, you're gonna get a great flexor stretch. Tuck the tail, get that right glute to work, okay? The front knee is over the ankle, okay? If you have knee issues, you may go back a little farther, but try to get the knee over the ankle as best as you can. You can lunge back deeper if you want more challenge. Just make sure that when you lunge, you're not down like this, and that you haven't broken the ability to use your, your core here, okay? When you come down so far, you pretty much just cut off your flexors and you don't want that, okay? You wanna still be able to use uh, the entire body here. So nice stable base, nice big inhale. Good, 
take the hands up and rotate and turn the pinkies in towards one another and open up the chest and lengthen the chest up. So I don't want you to go into a crazy back bend unless that's part of your practice, but still think about creating space and length. Relax your shoulders and your jaw. Nice big inhale. We're going to exhale. Circle the arms down to your mat. Good. Place the hands down and you're going to step back into your downward facing dog. So step back, take the foot back and just walk it out a bit. Okay, good. So from here, take an inhale. You're gonna exhale and we're gonna release the knees, chin and chest. So we're gonna come into child's pose. Next time we do this, I'm gonna teach you guys eight limb. Okay, so go back into child's pose. If you know eight limb, you can do eight limb. Good, from here, you press into the feet. So there's next to no weight in the knees. You press into the feet, good. You push, the knees are lifted and you lower yourself down. So it's core, it's arms and it's feet. Nice big inhale. You can be down here if you need to. If you have any back issues, hi guys, if you have any back issues, low back, um, unless it's anything other than a bulge, don't come in to height, okay? Just stay down with the head down, okay? You don't have to lift, okay? Um, again, this would be one of those areas where um, you'd wanna ask me for a consult if you have any spinal issues, please. So from here, right, we're here in Cobra, drawing in the belly, right? If you want to test yourself, you should be able to lift the hands, okay? Now, again, please don't do that if you have back issues. You're going to lower back down, tuck the toes. Now, you're going to press up. So I want your belly up first. So you're actually going to hug in and you're going to push up into a straight line, okay? If you can't do that, keep your knees down and press up in a straight line, okay? and then slowly make your way back into your downward facing dog, okay? And again, walk it out, okay? Get your shoulders aligned, get your neck aligned, breathe. Okay, you're gonna reach the right leg up behind you, nice and high, okay? Look to the hands, okay? You're gonna bring that foot forward and you're gonna step it between the hands, okay? Now I know a lot of you are laughing saying, yeah, right, Shannon, I can't get my foot forward. You're like pulling the leg up or whatever. I'll show you with my other hand, just because it's closer to the camera. So the leg's up, okay? See how I'm tenting my fingers? I'm leaning over to my right side to help my leg come in because my leg is longer than my arm. So if I were to actually try to step my foot forward, I would actually structurally like take out my ribs. So I mean to lift my hand up too. It might be that you have tightness in the hips. It might be that you have um, that your skeleton just doesn't do it. It doesn't matter. Okay. Find a way to help yourself move. And if you do have to sort of grab the leg and move it up and do it. Okay. That's fine. So we're back to the right side. Okay. Press into the foot, feet are hip width apart. So now notice the other foot is forward. Cause when we step back, we step back with the right. You're going to press into that foot. You're going to curl the tail circle, reach your arms up. Nice big inhale. Good. So same thing. Pressing that back leg straight, pressing into the front toes, making sure the knees over the ankle and recruiting the core. Shoulders wide and try to turn the hands back. You don't have to do this one every time with the hands, but it does feel great the first few times just to get uh, how we slept or fell asleep on the couch out of our neck. Good. Circle the arms back down. Soften the back leg. Now here, you're barely using your hands and you're barely using the leg. You're coming up. It's your core. You place the foot down and you fold down and you curl, roll all the way up and exhale, hands down to prayer. Good. So from here, what we're going to do is now we're going to do the other side. So that's technically half of a sun salutation because we step back with the right. Now we're going to step back with the left and I'm going to show you um, what eight limb is. Eight limb might be something that you work into. Give it a shot, give it a go. I'm gonna explain it. Um, if it isn't you today, or if it isn't you sometimes, do it as you need to, okay? It is hard to do, okay? And those of you with back issues, uh, I don't think you're gonna be doing eight limb, but you can try, especially if you're, uh, if you're a guy with back issues, you might be able to do it because you have stronger upper bodies typically than women do. So, ready guys, so hands to prayer, let's do it. Take an inhale. And exhale. One more. Nice big inhale. 
and exhale. Good. Press the hands down. Circle, reach up. Good. Exhale. Swan dive. Fold forward. So come all the way forward. Hinging where you can. Remember, it doesn't matter where you go. Okay. Hands can go on the legs. Inhale. Halfway lift. Nice flat back. Good. Soften the knees. Take the hands down. We're going to reach the left leg up now. And you're going to straighten it back. Try to keep the hips level. This is hard to do because you're shifting your weight. Go slow. Press into the right foot. Curl the tail and come up. If you notice that you're wiggling, press the weight into your big toe, second toe. Those are the weight-bearing center in your foot. But you should already know those if you did any of my other videos. Just a nice big inhale. Good. And we're going to exhale. Take the hands all the way down to the mat. Good. Place them. Step back into downward facing dog. So back we go. Good. Taking an inhale. Good. And we're going to exhale. So we're going to take the knees, chin, and chest down. So I'm going to teach you the more basic version of eight limb. We're going to dissect it a little bit. So 